The last several videos documented the progress we've made on the drive circuit. We also have had to fix several mechanical or low voltage issues in the car. This video will cover those, so if you like videos where dudes tinker with cars, play on. If you're only here for the drive system stuff, you can skip this one. I leaned on this rain guard one day, accidentally breaking it. Anything else we need to epoxy if any of the magnets fell off? Not yet. <laughs> Good as new. The car had been making lots of weird noises, so we tried to fix the exhaust. But Tom, you ask, why fix the exhaust in a car you're converting into an EV? Won't you remove that system anyway? Yes, but I was planning to move into a new house shortly after we took this video. We needed the Acti working on gas just long enough to get me moved in. We're not off to a great start because obviously the jacking process is harder than we thought. Also, LOL at jacking process. This shielding here is what we need to cut through because the exhaust is broken off inside there. Pretty tight spot. We're hoping we can get it with the Dremel. Looking at the tools we have for the Dremel, this is like the first time I've opened it. I've got the cutting wheel. Just need some epoxy. The world's most worn down wire wheel. <laughs> the way the Dremel tool works, you have to Novocaine your jaw first before you put it in your mouth. I've got lots of bits of metal on my face. Got all the way through this. If we can just pry back this shielding here, maybe we can get in there and tape the exhaust back up and it'll sound better. We've exposed most of the pipe. Dave is kind of praying that heat shield away. Pipe that has a break somewhere in the center there. Oh, Hammer, how will we ever get rid of this sheath? I've been asking that yeah. since our third date. We got a band-aid for the Acti because it has a boo-boo. We're trying to just pry this thing open along the edge that is tack welded shut. We couldn't get the Dremel tool in there. In this situation where the engine is mounted, free-balling, not a whole lot looks corroded under here. Thread it up and let it fall down the other side. And then how are we going to get the backing off? Pull it out from the side. So what's going on? I don't know if it's just bunching up in there. Jason is working his magic here. This is more fun than trying to program the controller. That's a really low bar. So it is quieter than it was, but still not as quiet as it should be here. The tape actually just slipped right back off as soon as I tugged on it. Look for alternative solutions. This is a learning experience. I think Jason's going to be sticky for the rest of eternity. We have a dirty secret. The radio shorted and broke shortly after we installed it and tested it. We now have a better solution for getting music in the truck. Just kidding. The new plan is to wire our sound input directly to the head unit and perhaps keep our amp in the circuit if we need it. We had a long list of other things that needed to be done under the dashboard, so we did a dash day where we tried to tackle them all. Good job, Kaylee. Good job. Sorry, I had to interrupt recording because my cat brought me a toy. Acti's back in the shed. Gonna do some work behind the dashboard again today. So this will be our second time having the dashboard off. Need some repair here. We got the dash back off. Unlike last time, we've disconnected the speedo cable the proper way. Glove compartment pieces are broken off. This here, like that. Kind of glued this stuff in place. We're hoping this is enough tension on it to get it to dry and set. <laughs> We didn't get it coming out of the syringe. No, so. we, we had that before though. We can just reuse that footage. <laughs> Remember that radio transmitter that we wasted like four episodes on? We've taken out the radio transmitter. Here's the fuse tap for the amp, but I, we can't find the amp back here. Either we're just dumb, which is very likely. It may also be that we already removed the amp and we just don't remember it. Tune in for the next five episodes where we rebuild this entire circuit. Let's not do that. <laughs> With the dash off, we could finally hook up the head unit to the second speaker, which we installed way back in part six. Here's the ends of the speaker cables for the second speaker. It's like we can just stick a wire in there and crimp it down for that one. This one's a little bit different. I don't know what's up with it. Jason very cleverly figured it out. These are two quick disconnects. One's a male end and one's a female end. Hook the radio up again with the dash off so we can test and see if the other speaker's working and then just hardwire something into the back of the radio. Although that's not going to make any sense because how's it going to know what frequency to pick it up at? I don't know. Uh, We're in uncharted waters here. I don't think we have a boat either. God, that is loud. Lovely. Getting anything? Nope. Let's just crank it all the way through that. Maybe we'll just try reversing the wires. We have reversed the polarity. Not hearing anything. Nothing's coming out. Move over, vaporwave. Now I'm really curious. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs>
Is this James Taylor? I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Yeah. Nothing is coming out of our added speaker. We have at the door a brown and a red cable. Come to find out, these are just tied off with this connector here. They're not actually hooked up to anything. We were missing a connector and it doesn't even plug into the back of the radio. So we have decided to jump the speaker wires from the one to the other. Let's see if that will work. This might be a bad station. There are bad stations. That did nothing. Reverse the polarity maybe. Um, or actually no. We oh right. Ah, maybe we should wire it up first. We are so smart. Nettoyer le bouchon avant de refermer. Glucosamine cream, this is a natural solution, oh, is a way to really in. get to yeah. it. Having installed the second speaker, it was time to try our new way of getting our phone audio to the head unit. What we will need to do is see if we can get audio into the back of it that's not just from the antenna. In our endless professionalism, we've got a quick disconnect inserted into the hole. There's like a little bit of wire touching the negative side of that. All we're trying to do is just test to see if we can plug something in the antenna hole and get sound out of it. It's gonna dangle. We'll dangle it. Perfect. If I unplug it, will do anything? Yep, so it's getting noise out of it and that's it. Is this what the song sounds like? I think so. I think we're just getting electrical signals yeah. from this as if it's an antenna. Okay, that's not working. We decided to take the antenna off and see if there's a way we could cheat, hook something up to this end of the antenna cable and then plug it into the back of the radio. This appears to be one entire unit where if you wanted to replace the antenna, you'd replace this and the entire cable. But we're just gonna put this back together because it's not gonna help us. We did a little bit of research online. If we wanna get a new head unit or reuse a different head unit, we can probably install it with the dash on so we don't have to make any decisions about that right now. Where we have this jumped to test our speakers, we'll probably unplug that until we've made our decision. We took a little piece of plastic off of here just to see what's going on. We have the washer line going up through there. We have a brake line, some wiring, and then some coolant hoses. Jason thinks the heater core is back here somewhere. I'm inclined to agree. We're going to need to know that. When we actually make it electric, we're going to have to find some alternative to the heater core. One thing we were annoyed by was the fact that if we replace everything with LED bulbs, it makes this horrible me sound every time you turn on the turn signals. <laughs> We've hooked up the battery again, turned the key on, and we're looking for the turn signal flasher, and we think it's this one. Turn the turn signals on, sound comes from that box. However, from that point, we don't really know what we can do to shut that noise up without ruining everything else. Jason took the time to put the steering wheel back on, and everything seemed to be great until the horn didn't work. They like waved or something, they were excited about the Acti. So usually I just like give the horn a quick toot to announce that I've acknowledged their existence and I'm happy they saw me. And then one time I did that, but like it got stuck. <laughs> so I went from being like jolly guy in a little truck to I'm an asshole! <laughs> that contact right there, springy thing makes contact with this ring here and everything seems to be kind of dirty so I bet if we clean it up it'll work again. The first one we just tested by shorting it. Beep. Yep so for our horn dysfunction we tried a few different things. We cleaned out where the contacts happened. What we didn't realize is that this thing moves and it needs to be aligned properly with this groove in the back of the steering wheel for it to complete the circuit and make the horn honk. So we've solved the problem. Now we can go back to putting those stupid screws in again. So Dave said the speedo came off real quick this time which is of course, the most fun part of the night. This car is a panty dropper. To make sure that the speedometer is hooked back up correctly, we're gonna jack up the car, run it. Last time we put the dash on, it took us quite some time, and this time it's going a lot quicker. The epoxy was dry, so it was time to complete the glove box fix. Oh, you fucker. Put the stuff in the glove compartment, take it's it for a, a test drive. momentous occasion. Glove compartment door will stay on. My Jesus book. A very dirty mask that I should not wear. Yeah, okay. This stupid magnet fell off again. I think we're gonna epoxy the magnet to the existing hot glue. Jason thinks we should just epoxy it directly to the fabric. Maybe we'll do that instead. We think this will work. Now. Oh, thank you. She keeps doing it. I'm sorry, this might just keep happening. Now, we want the radio to be a little more modern than it is, but we don't want the car to ever become too smart. One of the major issues with factory EVs today is that it's not clear whether they'll continue to be drivable if the company that manufactured them goes out of business. Factory EVs are reliant on complex software that receives frequent updates. If the company dies, who's... Kaylee, well, don't need that. Don't need that.
If the company dies, who's writing the patches? When given the choice, I don't think people should buy anything that won't work if it becomes disconnected from the internet. Any smart interface should have an underlying mechanical interface that can be used to operate the machine in the event that the smart interface is hacked, malfunctions, or loses internet access. This is like the very most important feature of any smart device, and none of them have it. One thing Battlestar Galactica got right is that the old ship that didn't have any networked computers would be the only one to survive in a networked world. World. Honestly, it's one of the reasons why I want a DIY electric vehicle. My other options are all reliant on an umbilical cord tied to institutions that I have no guarantee will last as long as the car. Sometimes low-tech and old-fashioned means reliable and even stylish. At the thrift store, I found this very modern car cover brought to you by Budge. Well, bad news about our car cover. It seems to have been cut. I don't know what else this could be. It's pretty rough. If it's too small for the Acti, it's really too small for anything. Probably just use it to cover up my motorcycle. Budge. And as always, if you want help by parts, check out the links in the description.